so good, even in times of triumph, difficulties, he always causes us to triumph, amen? So Father, we tell you thank you, we love you, we praise you. God, you are king, you're the almighty one. Father, we thank you for every individual under the sound of my voice that you would bless them, those who are watching us via the web. God, I pray that you would bless them. I thank you for all who are in the house. I thank you for our ministers, our elders, missionaries, deacons, mothers. God, continue to strengthen, strengthen the body of Christ, every lay person who is here. God, all are important and special to you. Father, your word says in Romans that you show no partiality, that you love all of us. And so, Father, I pray for those in this nation. I pray for those in other parts of this world. God, that you would continue to touch and say, God, we see the signs of the times that you are soon to return. Father, we see the wars. We see uh, the floods, the fires, and all these things, the earthquakes that are taking place near and far. And so, Father, your word forewarns us in Matthew, the 24th chapter. It forewarns us in 1 Peter. It forewarns us in 2 Timothy, the 3rd chapter, of the time of the signs, the signs of the times. And so, Father, we pray that you would continue to cover. God, even today, those who may not know you, I pray that they would come to know you and love you. It's because of your grace and mercy. Father, we thank you. There's no mistake that you will not forgive us of. And so, Father, we are grateful of your love to us, that none of us are better than anyone else. But, God, you are most important. And it's because of your grace and because of your mercy is the reason why we live. Father, we are grateful. We love you and we praise you. We give you the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on, give someone a handshake, a love, a hug. Come on, let them know glad to see you. Come on, let them know I'm glad to see you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Come on, we're hugging, shaking hand, church. We're delighted to have each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. God, you're, you're appreciative of his goodness. Come on, sing it out. You're easy as So uh, I will give you an update probably within the next day when that will be. 
uh, that I want you to just prepare your hearts. We have a lot to be prayerful of and thankful of God's goodness, but a lot to be prayerful for. I want you to be praying uh, for Sister Becky Petty, the pastor of her cousin. Uh, we're praying for you. That son who was not able to attend his father's own funeral got into a car accident, and now he is passed. So, Sister Petty, our prayers are with you. Our prayers are with you that God will strengthen you and be the lifter of your head. We pray for the uh, Cantu Williams family. I see Brittany here on today. Brittany and Brandon are praying for you in the passing of your father, that God will strengthen you. I heard you had just spoken with him within that last few hours of his death. And so, I'm praying that God will be your strength and your strong tower. That it's never easy losing someone. And so, our hearts heavy. It's challenging during these times. So know that we're praying for you. The funeral will be Tuesday, January 30th. We're also praying for Sister Janice Bell at the passing of her husband, uh, the L.C. Bell. All right. If you, Sister Janice here, I heard she was in Sunday school. She is. Oh, God bless you. We're praying for you. That God will strengthen you. I hope you uh, eulogize them on this Tuesday here at the church at 11 o'clock. And so I want you to be praying for them. God will strengthen them. And then also, I see here Deacon Willie James and Missionary George Swilly, Brother Elmer and Brother James Swilly, in the passing of their cousin. Our prayers, concern, our heart, gratitude goes out to you and the loss of your cousin, uh, Lady Thompson. All righty. So let's be praying for them. Of course, Deacon Littles, uh, he's returning back. His mother passed last week. They eulogized and funeralized her on yesterday. And so let's be praying. Amen. Let us be praying. One of our generals of the Church of God in Christ was called home, uh, Bishop Fred Lewis. Uh, yesterday, Bishop Fred Lewis uh, transitioned to glory as well. And so let's be praying for that entire family that God will strengthen them. I see on today also uh, Deacon Anthony Jones. God bless you and your family. Come on, help me celebrate each of these. God gives us strength. Pray for all these families. Good to see you today. I didn't know if you would make it. Pray for you, Anthony Jr., Martina, the rest of the children, Chris. See, we just pray for the entire family. Missionary Andrea Jones was here on Friday night, praising God like never before. And she was, she was lifting up the name of Jesus. She was down in worship. I told her, watch your wife. She is really praising God. She was giving God 110%. So I thank God for her. She is it's just a true blessing. She was one of, she was one of, in the background, one of those supporters that you would never imagine that I would get messages from, encouraging, uplifting messages. And uh, I brag about her. She does. Uh, she's fought for me in many ways. She's been a lot. She never stopped coming. And I'm grateful to her. Thank God for her life. And man, she was. Uh, She's a fan of Jesus Christ. Amen. She's a fan of Jesus Christ. If I can say it, she's a fan of Pastor Chris as well. She pushed me in many ways that you would never understand. And I thank God for her. I'm appreciative of her life and uh, the 15 years that she lived, 25 years of marriage. Amen. And so we thank God for you. This year would have been 26 years. So we continue to pray. More details will be forthcoming. It's been challenging for you. Pray for each and every one of you. It's been challenging for me as a pastor. I read for about six hours yesterday. I didn't know what I would preach. And so even to the sound, I apologize. But I have a scripture that I'm going to read. And for the next 15 to 20 minutes, we'll be blessed by the word of God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, God is so good. He's a worthy to be praised. He is our protector. He is our strength. And so as a church family, let's love on each other. Love on each other. Yeah. I tell you, every single time, create memories. I tell you, let's create memories that are lasting. Don't let small things get in the way of you creating conversation. If you have a uh, unforgiving spirit, I pray that that unforgiveness would be torn away from you. Yeah, you don't want to hold that. We, most of us are going to die. Most of us are going to die. We are. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we, we who are alive, or will be caught up, will remain, will be caught up to meet him in the air. So Matthew 25 talks about it. So it's important for us to understand. We're going to die. It's appointed for man to die, all right? For woman to die. So we have to be ready. We must have our hearts ready. We must love on our family members. It's important not for you to just say or look or bring home food and say, I love you. 
it's important for you to verbally communicate that. Yeah. Mission Angela Jones, the last few weeks, have sent text messages to all her family. Yeah. This wasn't something new. This is something she did. She would send text messages to her family, letting them know how much she loved them. Matter of fact, um, for the awesome revival that we had on Friday night, put your hands together. Pastor John had a phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, all that took place. It was just a blessing, a blessing what he preached and the word of God that was so rich in each of our ears and the charge of the atmosphere of praying. And I want us to lose that. I want us to maintain that. that maintain. We, don't, we don't get excited for people or for man, but we get excited for God knowing what he has done. Amen. So there should be a constant exuberation, a constant praise with the fruit of our lips that we magnify God. Why? Because he's just been good. Why? Because he is just God all by himself. Yeah. That's enough reason for you to praise him and to tell him thank you. Amen? So with that, I want you to always remember that. that we are grateful to God. Amen? She texts and emails so many family members. I think half of the people who were here on Friday night came because missionary Andrea Jones had invited them. Yeah. And so it's a blessing. All her family, she's tweeting. She even texts her, her auntie all the way in Chicago, Illinois as if she was going to come to Saginaw. She wanted people to be in the house of the Lord. Help me celebrate her life at this time. Amen. Help me celebrate. Missionary Andrea Jones. Bernice Jones. What a wonderful lady. I thank God for her. for the praise scene. Really close to her. Talk about her as a eulogize, but I thank God for her. I must give her her due respect. She was just a faithful member. My heart was hurting. I'm not even her husband. My heart hurts. I can't explain as a pastor, but my heart hurts. But God will see us through. Amen? Amen. You'll stand on your feet. Psalms, the 91st chapter. Psalms 91. So that's where I know to go today. I was vacillating between things. I apologize to the team. I enjoyed you with the music ministry uh, on today as well. Psalms 91 says, he who dwells, let's go from the King James Version. He that dwells within the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Verse 3, let's keep going. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. This, this devil will always try to pursue. Verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall we trust. Uh -huh. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the Arab that flyeth by day. We're going to go through verse 8. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, uh -huh. and ten thousand at thy right hand. But the blessing of it is knowing because of who we are, faithful to him, None of these shall come nigh thee. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and receive the reward. Come on, clap your hands for God's word on this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I want to just share with you, uh, help is on the way. That God is a God that never lies. Always supply every need. That is the blessing of knowing God. So uh, today I want to share with you that our faith will be tested in everything that we live in life. I don't want you to think in the beautiful society that we are in, your faith will be tested. It is not necessarily, Sister Hodges, because we have seen that our faith, it's just a part of life. That anything that comes easy, I'll tell you honestly, it probably won't be worth it. But life deals some tough situations and challenges that all of us have to endure, that we have to bear, that we experience pain in our life. And sometimes pain is not comfortable, but the, the, the knowing of the fact of the matter is you have to experience pain. As a matter of fact, if you don't experience pain, I have a greater concern for you because that means that you have lost feeling. And that some limbs are not acting uh, as they properly should. And so with that in our lives, God challenges each and every one of us that pain is an identifier for us. It, it allows us to see uh, what, what may not be working properly. 
And so today, I, I want to share with you in regards to even this text that all of us will experience that. But I'm so grateful that the prophet on uh, the other night said that there will be a battle. But then there will be another battle. <laughs> Then after that, there'll be even another battle. But I'm here to tell you, after all of these battles, God is going to give you the victory. That if you can find yourself in a prayer and in a praise, deep down out of your belly, that you can praise him no matter what the situation is. As Evangelist Pryor said today, God is going to give you the victory. Why? Because God always causes us to triumph. Or you ought to tell yourself, God is going to cause me to triumph. I, I am a victorious believer. Listen, you don't have to be a member here, but know that you are a victorious believer. God's got your best interests at heart. That God knows you, that he will protect you, that he will keep you and supply every need. That's the goodness of knowing Jesus. That's the goodness of knowing our Lord and Savior. And so after every battle that you're going through, you're going to win this war. Tell your neighbor, you're going to win this. Why? Because help is on the way. Who is our help? Our help is none other than Jesus Christ. That in times of need, that we have to call on Jesus. That in our difficult situations, we got to call on him, knowing that he will supply every single need. Let me tell you, to be honest, it's easier said than done. <laughs> When you're going through the fire, life throws unexpected situations that try to harm you and plague you. And the enemy will tell you, uh, is God on your side? Yeah. Uh, the enemy will tell you, I don't believe that God is on your side. You shouldn't have to go through this. Let, let me tell you, yes, God is on your side. Every situation that you go through, that God says, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. And I'll be with you during the midst of it all. Tell the Lord, thank you today. Oh, I need you, Father. I believe that help is on the way. And so here we are today. We're praying. We're, we're fasting. This is the conclusion of our fast for some of you. Some of you will continue to go for another 19 days to complete 40. But I want you to believe that well, prayer and fasting has been of great value. Uh, that prayer, many of us have to understand this, that prayer is not getting God to do your will. Hear me today. Uh, that some of us, we use prayer like we use a fire extinguisher. Do you hear me? Uh, we only use it in times of emergency. Uh, that some of us use prayer like a parachute. Uh, that we know it's there, but we never use it. Pray that we never have to use it. That some of us, unfortunately, will use prayer uh, like, like a salesman would do that. We got to... Uh, Always be it for it and always go. No, God says, I want you to come to me with your heart. Some people use prayer uh, as if it's magic. Uh, that, that God is not after tricks. That we only pray asking God to be our abracadabra. But I pray today that you would have a yearning in your heart that, that prayer starts some things. That God said that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. That God is a healer. He is a rewarder of those who diligently pursue, seek him. And so as you are praying in this time, that prayer is none of the things that I've mentioned, but prayer and fasting prepares you for what's ahead. Yes, yes, yes. And you've got to know this, that when you pray and you communicate with God, a fasting and prayer is strengthening you. Fasting and prayer is giving you the fortitude to stand what the devil is going to try to bring at you. But I'm here to tell the devil, you picked the wrong fight. I'm here to tell the devil that, listen, God is going to raise up a standard against thee. And so we are victors. We are overcomers. That we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Uh, do I have a witness in the house today that I'm an overcomer? Come on, speak that into your heart. I am an overcomer. Uh, I know the enemy wants you to throw in the towel, but God's grace and mercy has caused you to know that you are an overcomer. So even Jesus, let me tell you, uh, in Luke, the 22nd chapter, uh, around the 42nd verse, put it up on the screen, please, Luke 22 and 42. Even Jesus, as he prayed, he, he talked to God, his father, and he begins to speak to him. And what did he say? He, he, says, uh, he says, if it be possible, Lord, remove this cup from me. Uh, this is what Jesus said, even in the time of pain and agony. He began to pray, Father, if it be thy will, remove this cup. But many of us in our lives, we have to have a nevertheless. Uh, come on, tell God, nevertheless. Uh, whatever you bring my way, God, I know that you're going to cause me to overcome it. Whatever situation that I'm going through in my life, God, you're going to cause me to pray. 
persevere through this. And nevertheless, even in loss, even through pain in my life, even through losing my job, nevertheless, God, you're going to take care of me. Nevertheless, nevertheless, even when my child seems to be acting up in this world, never you a liar, nevertheless, God's going to take good care of me. I put it in them, they're going to respond to God's goodness. So God speaks to us that even Jesus had said this, not your will, my will, but your will be done. Yes, Father, I thank you for being the great example that Jesus was not saying, I don't want to be obedient. Jesus was not refusing to submit to his father. Jesus was saying, Father, if there's any other way, all things be equal. I'd rather not have it to do it this way, but God, I'm going to be obedient to you. Yes. And Hebrews says that Jesus earned obedience by the things that he suffered. And so as we begin to look at our lives and we wrestle with the, the, the news that we receive, as we re wrestle with the tragedies that we hear about, nevertheless, Father, I'm going to trust you knowing that help is on the way. And so when we look at the scripture, when we, when we look what Luke tells us as Jesus prayed in Luke 22 and 42, the blessing of it is when Luke prayed, God sent an angel down from heaven and he came to strengthen Jesus. Yeah. That's what you got to understand with the power of prayer. Whenever you're going through the hard time, the enemy will tell you, don't pray. Mm -hmm. The enemy will tell you it's not worth it. God doesn't hear your prayer. But as we see in this text, that after Jesus prayed, yeah. God sent the warring angel by the name of Michael to speak on his behalf and war for him and tell him, man, I'm going to bring you through that I can strengthen you. So God tells each and every one of us, and I share with you, BBM, God is going to strengthen us. Even in our tough times and our difficult hours, the loss that we have experienced with our brothers and sisters, God is going to strengthen us. Uh, the devil thinks that we're going to quit throwing the towel, but I'm here to tell the devil, you are a defeated foe. We're not backing up. We're moving forward. That's right. That's right. Oh, so I have a belief in the house, and I'm not scared that I'm going to praise you. Ah, you can't shut my mouth. You can't shut me down. Enemy, you are defeated. You are defeated, but I'm going to praise God anyhow. You gotta have a made up mind. You gotta get your hands from outside your pocket and tell, lift your hands up high and say that I'm gonna praise him. Anyhow, I'm gonna praise him. Anyhow, deep down in my belly, I know that God is working it out for my. I'm gonna praise my Lord and Savior. Yeah, I'm gonna praise him. Come on, lift your voice up, tell him. He says that what I'll do, he says, I'll renew your strength. 
Uh, that, that's the message of God. Psalms 103 and 5. Write these scriptures down as God. Get down low. Psalms 103. He says, I'll renew your strength like an eagle. He says, I'll begin to give you a strength like no other. And, and God wants to let you know that even in your difficult times, uh, the, the challenges that you experience, uh, go to Isaiah, the 41st chapter, and the 13th verse, Isaiah 41 and 13. Thank you, Father. He says, for I, the Lord, your God, uh -huh. he says, I hold your right hand. Uh -huh. It is I who say to you, fear not. Fear not. I am the one who will help you. Uh -huh. Ah, do you have a, do I have a witness in the house? Although my heart hurts, although I wreck what I feel like sometimes throwing in a towel, I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about sometimes you feel like after one battle, there's another battle. After the second battle, there's a third battle. And right when it feels like you got the victory, the devil will throw another battle at you. But here I am to tell you today, as I said, 41 and 30, God says, I'm going to hold your hand through. Hold my hand. It's a blessing of God. He says, I hold your hand. So God is strategic. That even in this text of Psalms 91, that God is intentional of everything that he does. He says, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. He, 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 let's look at this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the earth. But when God begins to share with us, he says, I'll be your protector. He says, but you've got to stand, Deacon Clay, under the almighty God. In the Sunday school teaching today that was so good, he says, the main thing of the main thing, no matter who you are, you've got to stand with God. You've got to know that God is your help. So too many of us, we're reaching out to everybody else instead of reaching up to God. <laughs> hear me today. We're reaching to everybody else. We're reaching out to leaves. Uh, you hear me today. We're, we're reaching out to limbs when God says, I'll be your root. He says, you got to make sure that you have a sure foundation. And so God challenges us as a body of believers, even during this time, that God is going to get the victory. See, listen, as I told you, he never makes a mistake. He, he, he understands all things. <laughs> he, he knows all things. And so you have to have a made-up mind that, don't they slay me, yet will I trust you. Tell your neighbor, help us on the way. Do you believe it today? And so what God does is, he sees from a higher perspective. Uh, just, just work with me today as, as God is helping me today. He, he sees from a higher perspective. Why do you say that? He says, I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's the key. That is all about abiding under the shadow of the Almighty God. Now, now what do you mean, Pastor Chris? What does the Almighty mean? Yeah, you got to stay there. You got to abide there. You got to dwell there. I heard you today. Thank you. Uh, you. You can know that there's the Almighty, but but, but you got to live with the Almighty. You got to pray to the Almighty. You got to speak the Almighty words. <laughs> That's the abiding. That's the standing still, knowing that God is going to do it. See, the Almighty is the most holy one. Yes. He, he is the El Elyon. Hallelujah. The highest of all. In other words, he has all authority, all uh, supreme authority. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord, sister Bibbs, of all lords. And so when you understand who God is, the almighty one, and he gives a different perspective because he sees things that none of us see. Listen, even out of death, God says, I'm going to get the glory. Give uh -huh. me the death. That God is trying to get somebody's attention. Now, God, you don't have to kill me. I got some more things to do. <laughs> but whatever your will is, I trust you. And so as we look at our lives, that God never makes a mistake. I'm here to tell you what seems like loss will be heaven's gain. And I'm not talking about just the life of an individual who knows the Lord. But what I'm here to tell you, God will draw and get some of our attention because we've gotten so comfortable That's with things. Really the Most High God has a totally different perspective than we do. Yeah. Oh, oh, I just got to, I got to uh, download that, that, that eight years ago, Bishop Pryor died. Uh -huh. My father. Yeah. I was broken. I was torn apart. February the 22nd, he passed. But February the 29th, 
I got another father, Deacon Nelson, stand up. Put your hands together. Now he wasn't a deacon then. Let me show you how God's work works. That God transitioned my father to glory. God's got a whole different perspective than what you think God is doing. And so when it appears that there is loss, it's heaven's gain. God is strategic in his plan. And so when my, my father transitioned to glory, seven days later, a man that rarely came to church, a man that came to a men's day and, and the prayer breakfast, God put him on his heart to come to the Lord. Lord. So what did I gain? I gained my father's relationship, my father in heaven. God has a bigger perspective on everything that we don't see. He is the almighty one. He is the El Elyon. Here's a man that never really came to church, but God saved him. Now he needs every one of you to church, and he lives in faith. God's got a greater perspective on him. Find 
peace that surpasses all understanding. The first P you'll find is perspective. The second P that you'll find is protection. The third thing is you, 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 you'll find peace in verse 5. He says, you will not fear for the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by you. Listen, when all that stuff will come against you, yeah, you better believe you'll be scared. But when you're in the safety and in the ark of God, God will hide you that you will not be able to see some of the things you're seen and unseen that God is protecting you from. That's a good enough reason to say, God, i got to get to your secret place. Yes. Your secret place provides peace. Peace doesn't mean that there will be an absence of trouble. Peace doesn't mean that there will be no challenges in your life. Peace allows you to understand that all the hell and all the heartaches that are going around me, my faith that I put in me, that God is going to allow me to move and to triumph and to overcome every situation. Peace allows me to know that God is going to supply. He's going to take care of every single thing that I need. Even in loss, God is going to do it. That's why he says, I give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. All understanding. He said that will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. That's what he said. He says, I'll give you this peace that will supersede anything else. Money won't do it. Fame won't do it. Clothes won't do it. A hot surely won't do it. But I'm here to tell you, when you get Jesus in your life, and you find him with all your heart and all your mind, and you get to that secret place, God says, I'll show myself yes. mighty and strong. Yes. He says, I'll deliver you from the heart. So as we pray today, I want you to know that God said, I'm going to give you peace. He says, I never make a mistake. He says that I will protect you. He says that I will comfort you. But God says, I'll send raven. He said, I'll rain manna down from heaven to be your blessing. Uh, some of you are lacking food. Some of you are lacking what you need. Some of you are lacking uh, exposure. And with, God says, listen, if you get under me, I'll put you around people who can expose you. <laughs> Clap your hands at that. God, God, God says, I'll meet every single need that you have. He says, I'll bless you indeed. He says, I'll take care of every single thing. He says, you are my hiding place. You're my hiding place. Psalms 32 and 7. He says, you, oh God, David, you are my hiding place. <laughs> That's the thing about I love about God. And under his wings, he said, he will cover us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Blessing of being a little baby bird is knowing that under mom and daddy's wings, mama's going to hide. Yes. He says, you will protect me from trouble. And you will surround me with songs of deliverance. Yes, sir. And that's what I want to share with you today. Help us on the way that God will never allow you to be outside without covering when you're in the secret place of God. He says, I will send deliverance to you. Put Psalms 32 and 7 up. He says, I'll be your deliverer. He says, I'll be your strong child. Yeah. He, he says, no, you, you may mourn for a little bit, but if you put a praise on it, God says, I'll bless you. That we can may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. That I'll give you a new song that you'll sing. That everything's going to be all right. I know you can't see it right now. Faith looks beyond the place of where you are at, knowing that God, that's why you got to have God's word in your heart. Not only that you may not sin against thee, but that your faith will move you outside of your present circumstance. I don't look to what man says. I look to what the all-sufficient one says. God is going to do it. And as I go through that secret place, God is moving me. He's protecting me. He's even given me a different perspective on things. Because the lower I go, the greater the elevation God will take you to. God, give me a new perspective. That you are the almighty one. You are the El Shaddai God, the multi-breasted one. You hear me say it. The more demand that you put on the breast, the more supply you will receive. God told me to tell you today, the more, I think they said that, the more you demand, the, 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 the more that you pull from God, the more that you go to God, whilst God will start to cover you. Before you know it, you begin to become stronger in your life. You fulfill the wiseness of God. We've got a world that is running away from God. We've got a world that is concerned about themselves more than fulfilling God. Yes, yes. God says, you break my heart. You got busy doing everything else versus seeking my face. 
It says, but when you seek me in the secret place, then will you find. I'm here to tell you today, God says, I want you to seek me like never before. That I'll give you a different perspective. That I'll provide protection for you. And the third thing is I'll give you, I'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. In other words, God says, I'll blow your mind. Because what everybody else has killed themselves on. When everybody else says, life is not worth living because you lost someone special in your life. You, you got a peace from the almighty God that will be dropped into your spirit to know that you can overcome any triumph, any trial, that God is going to use you as a test of money for people who are going through. God, I thank you that even every struggle that I go through, I let them know it was you that brought me through. Come on, stand on your feet. Every, every hard issue that I've gone through, God, I'll know. And I'll let them know it was you that saw me through. It was you. It was you, Lord. It was through my fasting and praying that I developed a relationship that not only prepared me for life, but it prepared me for what those things that are coming ahead. That's why you got to pray. That's why, like never before, the unlimited power of prayer, church, if we don't pray, we'll lose the anointing of God. We'll be in a dead place. Many people are out of relationship because they don't speak with each other. But I pray today, God will restore marriages. He says, if you love me, you're going to talk to me. Why? Because there's communication, there's fellowship there. God, I pray for relationships in the house today for these single. And God, you will restore relationships. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what prayer is. God says, I wish they would just set an appointment with me in the secret place. The things that they've been worried about, he says, I've already got that covered. The people that allowed them to keep them from pursuing their destiny, God says, don't even worry about that. He says, I've got them covered. He says, set an appointment with me. I believe that God sometimes, he looks down at us waiting for us, that he waits in the room. I believe in God sometimes on many days when you say, God, I'm going to pray. I believe God is in the room saying, I've got something for you, child. I've got bread for you. I've got relationship with you. I've got so much for you. And he's waiting and you're running every single area. You're doing things that don't even matter. And God says, you set an appointment for me. Here I am for you. I've got all of this for you. If you would spend more time praying, I'll open up the floodgates of heaven for you. I'll give you a new revelation and spiritual insight. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard and say, You can't touch my seat. God will cover you. Why? Because you're running to the secret place. Many of us have gotten too busy. God says, I'm wrong for the appointment with long to hear from you. Yes, Jesus. long to just hear your voice. Yes, Jesus. God, I thank you because you never make a mistake. Never. And in that secret place, finding peace. Yes, Jesus. In that secret place, yes, Jesus. I find protection. Yes, Jesus. In that secret place, I get a whole new perspective of who you are. Bow that head. Father, today, hurts for many of us. Yes, Jesus. For being honest today. But I think about the honesty of who you are and what you can do. I think about God sending your only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. Yes, Jesus. But the blessing of it all, God, is you give us a reward. That's what verse 8 says. That God, God will bless and give a reward. God, I thank you for the reward that you give us new life. That we don't have to hear crying. We don't have to hear complaints. We don't have to take any more medication. And God, you give us great reward. God, even us if we're finding ourselves in the secret place. And God, while we are yet here, we'll tell every man, woman, boy, and girl about the love of Jesus Christ. That it doesn't care about your background, doesn't care about your education or your lack of education. 
doesn't care if you received a diploma, doesn't care what type of family that you come from. God, you love every single one of us. God, help us to go back to our first love. Our first love is you. God, help us to find our first love. Let us have a passion and a zeal to pursue you the more. And God, after every battle, we will cry out to you knowing that you give us the victory. Knowing that you will give us the victory. Come on, tell him, thank you for the victory. God, I thank you for the help that you sent. You sent your warring angels, Psalms 103 and 20, to fight on my behalf. Oh, that was the scripture this week for me. That God, you sent Psalms 103 and 20 to war on my behalf. God, I didn't even know as we were studying this that this week for my personal devotion that I would need that scripture for this week. That you would send your angels to war on my behalf, Psalms 103 and 20. That you, you would unleash your angels to protect me, uh, to keep me from all harm, from throwing in the towels, and knowing that you are the all-sufficient one. Thank you, Father, for being a good, good Father. Father, today, we thank you that we find peace in you. We find joy in you. We find comfort in you. Listen, say right there. there you're there and you say, Chris, I need to know have that relationship with God. I'm so excited for you. Let me tell you, the, the angels in heaven are bowing their knees, looking down and saying, come on, come on. If I can paint a picture for you today, the angels in heaven are bowing saying, John, come on, this is your time. Uh, the, the, the angels, God is praying. He's pulling on your heart today saying, this is for you. Yes, yes. Don't run from this. Come. The angels are saying, harmony, come on. He says, I'll give you a new song. Don't worry about everybody else. You're thinking about everybody else. He says, I'll give you songs of deliverance. Psalm 32 and 7. Yes, yes, yes. He says, I'll put a new song in your heart. Yes, yes. He says, you've been running day after day. You, you've been searching and none of this has satisfied you. But today, God says, I'll give you a hope. I'll give you an expected end. I'll give you a future. I'll give you your joy back. I'll give you a peace. I'll give you love back. God says, I'll give you a renewed energy and a desire to serve. Jesus, yes, Jesus. Lift up that hand if I'm talking to you. Lift up that hand. You got to run to that secret place. Some of you already may be saved. But you said, I need that joy back. God told me to tell you, get back into that secret place. There's perspective. There's protection. There's peace there. Lift that hand. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. You say, God, I got it. I need more. God says, yeah, I'm waiting for you. He says, I'm there for you. Lift that hand. Don't be ashamed. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Maybe a few months ago, I would have lifted my hand. And God says, you got to find that secret place. I'm not here to shame you. I'm here so that God can bless you. So, Father, I pray for these. God, I don't even see them. Lift that hand. You, you, you need more from God. You know you're not in the place of where you need to be, but you need more from God. Come on, team. You can go out and pray with them. Just lift your hand. Lift your hand. There's, there should be some more. Come on. You, you need prayer today. I'm not asking you to come to the front. But I'm here to tell you God wants to release a newness in you. That's it. That's it. We got more. Come on, pray with them. We got more. Come on, there's some more over there. All the way in the back. Thank you. Yes, God. And God says, I want to do a new thing in you. Oh, I see the angels bending down. I see them harmony saying, come, 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 come. I see them saying, you know what? There's more for you. There's more for you. He says, I want you to drink from this fountain that never runs dry. Quit drinking after things that will not satisfy you or please you. God says, I am. Is that way? God says, I'll meet your every need. Come on, pray, say, pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. You are my strength. Father, I thank you. You're meeting me. We got busy. We got out of place. We got distracted by things. Listen, you're not the only one. All of us go through that sometimes. But know that God loves you. Know that God's grace and his good news is here to let you know that I love you with an everlasting love. He's not a condemning God. He's a God of love, God of grace. You see, I've got other conditions. I've got
are some things that I've been attached to. Listen, when you get into the arms of God, God says, I'll bless you with an everlasting love. I fulfill every need and desire, every thirst. God says, I'll quench the thirst.